Welcome to the Grow Your Practice podcast. Hi, I'm your host, Chad Madden, owner of Madden Physical Therapy and Breakthrough. Join me each week as we dive into the best practices, systems, principles, tips, and tricks to help you grow your private practice. Hi, everybody. Chad Madden here with the Grow Your Practice podcast. And today we have a very special guest, Kelly Brown. Kelly is a physical therapist and also is with Prediction Health. You might have heard our Prediction Health featured in a lot of different places, but it's an AI for our documentation in PT. So welcome to the podcast here, Kelly. Yes, Chad. Thank you so much. I'm very honored to be on. Cool. So I know you have a very interesting uh, story about how you went from being in clinical care and ultimately converting over through teaching you know, physical therapists how to use EMR, ultimately landing with Prediction Health. So can you talk about your journey from physical therapist to prediction health here? Yeah, sure. Um, so I have a pretty, you know, started out pretty standard, you know, went into outpatient as a staff therapist and wanted to be as, you know, good of a clinician as I could be. Um, and then worked my way into clinic director and regional director within an organization of the Pacific North Northwest um, with about 140 therapists. Um, as I was a clinic director, I was realizing that the EMR that we worked with, there was a lot of um, opportunities for improvement. And um, I felt like I like was coming up with like, hey, ideas. And so I just kind of became the liaison to the um, software developers within that certain EMR. And I started connecting with them on a regular basis. And I just happened to become the expert in our company on them. So then I just fell into the role of, you know, training all of our EMR, all the new folks on our EMR. Um, I also was in charge of creating all the templates, um, ensuring that we had all the information, um, making sure that, you know, everyone on our team was both compliant in the minimum way that I understood it at the time, um, and also being concise. Like my goal was really to make people less burdened by documentation. So, so I actually realized I really cared about that. It was something that I always feel like is a weight on our shoulders as therapists. It's never something we can get ahead of because the patients, you can't do your documentation before the patient's in the door. Um, so it's always something that you're behind on. Um, so it's something that I really wanted therapists to be as fast and efficient as possible. So I kind of stumbled upon this passion about, about that and I became the trainer. So, um, so with that, the CEO of our company, Prediction Health, um, Pedro, he reached out and he's one of our co-founders. He reached out to the CEO of the company I was working with at the time and they connected on LinkedIn and Pedro asked um, the CEO, like, hey, can I can I meet you guys? We have this new technology. Um, you know, I'd really like to, you know, meet with you to see if you'd be interested. And so Pedro flew out to the Seattle area um, from Nashville, which is where Prediction Health is based. And uh, the CEO of the company I worked with called me up and said, hey, Kelly, can you clear your schedule for a couple hours and meet with this really interesting guy? He's got this cool technology. Um, they're thinking about coming into PT and he'd like, you know, he'd like a therapist perspective. You know, what do you think? And I said, sure. So cleared my schedule. Um, Pedro came in and we talked for two hours about his technology and his AI technology and what they were doing. Um, that was 2019. Yeah, 2019. Um, and so then over the next two and a half years, I worked with him um, developing out some of the product that you see today, um, basically asking him questions like, can you read my notes and figure out if the compliance is correct. Can you, and so Pedro is, um, he's brilliant. So both of our founders are brilliant. So Ravi and Pedro are both um, PhDs, MDs out of Vanderbilt. Um, and they went to school to, to get their informatics, their PhD in informatics and their physicians. Um, and they just want to solve healthcare, the messiness in healthcare data. Um, and so it was really interesting because he, he was always, the way his brain works is to solve problems. And so I could propose a problem and he'd try to solve it. So it was a fun, it was a fun um, relationship to start. And so then as they started getting into more of the, the PT realm, um, I asked to join the team um, because I realized like this is something so powerful and the, the actual um, technology that they're offering in the PT realm can really make such a huge difference. Um, and one of the things I really was passionate about is that PT never gets the cool stuff first. Like we don't get the technologies first. We're always like, oh, I wonder if this would work in PT as well. Um, and so the fact that this is a new technology and it's in physical therapy is, I think, really remarkable. So so I wanted to kind of make sure that it stayed here and that we could really get it into PT. Um, so I asked Pedro to join the team. And so I've been on the team now for about a year and a half. Um, and it's been a very fun, wild ride. So it's been a lot of fun. Cool. Love your passion, Kelly. That's great. 
We, uh, so th- just a disclaimer for all of our listeners here. Um, I, th- <laughs> when I first met Kelly and Andrew and Adam, um, at a breakthrough event here in Chicago, we, when I got back, I s- sat down with her team. I saw what they could do. Uh, th- albeit briefly, what was it? 15 or 20 minutes. Maybe yeah. Yeah, it, it was a pretty brief preview, but I let my, um, my business partner, Mike Gilbert, here at Madden Gilbert PT, I said, Mike, you know, your operations minded. This is what you've been looking for. For years, we've been doing chart audits um, and we're always behind. You know, the directors never have enough time to complete the chart audits. Um, take a look at this software, the AI, what they're doing. It's pretty amazing. So I am very biased. And this is my disclaimer. Huge asterisk here. Uh, Mike was extremely excited by everything that he saw. It basically, you know, objectifies everything that we've been trying to do um, for years. So, and, and saves a lot of time. Now, when we're talking about AI and you're talking about using it in documentation, lots of room for confusion there. I think, mm-hmm. you know, most of us are confused exactly what AI is. Can you talk about that relative to prediction health and ultimately what your tool, what your software, um, what your AI software is helping practice owners do Kelly? Yeah, for sure. So I'll describe a little bit about how the AI was created. Um, I think we, you know, to your point, there's AI is a very hot topic out there. And there's just like a lot of kind of interesting things um, that people are doing with it. Um, our, our AI model was designed for PT compliance. And so we read 100% of the therapist chart notes. And we have a subset of labels that we apply to each sentence, which then categorize into different components, which are based off of Medicare requirements APTA's best practices and some requirements from private payers. So we have a subset of like minimum requirement documentation that we're looking for and our AI model can identify keywords and phrases that would map to those components. So the process of that, um, as you can imagine, we have, we train the model on a large subset of perfect documentation that's been human validated. So this isn't just like an AI run, you know, running wild and, you know, just creating itself. This is like very specific compliance experts that we've been working with over the years to make sure that what we're training our models on are perfect compliance notes. Um, And I'll also add, we are looking at concise notes as well. Um, I know Chad will likely talk about over documentation a little bit later too, but, but I always like to say like, we're not just looking for compliance, we're looking for concise um, and so because you want to be able to walk that fine line of writing the minimum amount of requirement to be compliant, but also not over, you know, writing a ton of documentation that makes it take forever. Um, so the subset of notes that we use to actually train our models are both concise and compliant. Now, we continually validate it with human validation to continue to train the models and make it smarter and smarter. And so we do that with each EMR integration that we do, knowing that the workflow with each EMR is a little different. Um, and then any, any kind of outlier that we see in the data, which is a lot of work that I do, is I look at the data and I see if there's anything that seems kind of odd or any feedback we get from our current clients. Like, hey, you know, I noticed that my score isn't improving here, um, but I've been really working on this. You know, what's going on? And so we take that, we retrain our models with that, and we continue to make it smarter and smarter. That's awesome. So you've talked about documentation. I know uh, the one of one of the things that, that we talked about earlier, Kelly, was the uh, CPT codes and justifying the codes. So can you talk about that? Because in our world, you know, we're talking with the therapist. They're billing nine seven one four zero times. Let's call it two. So they're billing billing two manual therapy codes and then two Therex codes. And that is redundant coding that gets us, that's a red flag for most insurance companies, especially in in an audit or it leads to an audit. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about what the software would do in that situation and, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, drive towards greater utilization of therapeutic activity and other codes that we actually Mm -hmm. get reimbursed higher for and are more valuable within the marketplace? Yeah, great question. So we actually just recently, so this is a new feature that we're launching over the next month, but um, our team, we've been working over the last eight months at actually developing a separate um, CPT code AI model. And that separate AI model is actually designed to read just the intervention section and predict if the correct intervention like unit was billed for that code, for that text that you wrote. So let's say you wrote, um, you know, sit to stand five times 10, 
um, mini squats, blah, blah, blah. And you build that as therapeutic exercise. Our AI model would read that text, see that you, that that therapist built therapeutic exercise, and it would predict that it could have been therapeutic activity. So in our, in our platform, you actually can see, and we've done that for the, not just in that way, but also like if you're billing something for therapeutic activity, but you don't have the justification for it, and it should be therapeutic exercise, like you're doing shoulder pulley, and all you have is shoulder pulley, you know, three times three minutes, and you build it as therapeutic activity, we would flag that as being therapeutic exercise. So we're starting with the core four, so Therex, manual, therapeutic activity, and neuro, and we're predicting how often those units could have been billed the other three. And so we're essentially giving insight into, do your therapists understand the definitions of the CPT codes? And so that is incredibly challenging for practices to have visibility into. Um, Most of us spend time educating our therapists on how, like what the definitions of the codes are, how we expect therapists to actually bill for what they're doing. Um, But it's very challenging to actually follow up on that and to continually monitor that your therapists are actually performing that. So in our platform, we actually have a couple of different ways that we monitor that. Number one, we have a really easy visualization of CPT code distribution over time. That's a really hard metric to get to in most EMRs. For us, it's really simple. We have a great graph. Um, We also have the comparison of clinic to clinic and provider to provider. Um, You can look at it, you know, we can filter the information whichever way you want. Um, So that's very helpful. But then additionally, you can see for those providers who have a high percentage of therapeutic exercise, how frequently are those units actually have an opportunity to be a higher value code or vice versa. Um, So, and again, you can actually see that upfront within our platform and it's easy. Additionally, we have a way to give feedback to our model to basically say like, do you agree with this or not? So every AI model is not going to be perfect, right? So there's always retraining this. It's not going to be hundred percent perfect. So if there's ever a time where, you know, like for instance, when I saw recently, like hammer, supination, um, pronation, it picked up hammer. So it was thinking like hammering, which is a functional task, right? So it labeled that as therapeutic activity. But some of us might think that should be therapeutic exercise. So you can actually say, I disagree with this and tell us what you think it should be. And it will go back into our training models and we'll be able to retrain our models on that data to continue to make it smarter and smarter. Very cool. I, so a- anything else on CPT codes? and the upcoming AI model that so that particular yeah so that particular thing we so that's one of our new features additionally we have kind of a um, another insight when it comes to CPT code and um, just general kind of information about billing so like I said it's really hard to see trends with what your therapists are doing and then to actually do something about it and monitor that right so not only are we measuring justification for, for CPT codes but then we're also looking at the efficiency in which your therapists are billing. So for the time they've spent with their therapist or with their patient, excuse me, are they billing the appropriate number of units? So we have an entire section of our dashboard where we're actually analyzing every visit type and whether or not there's the expected number of units based on the total minute rule or the AMA rule and the calculations that we've done for that for each visit type. And if it's the like, could there be more units that you could have picked up? So again, showing visibility to, into the, your therapist on which therapists understand how to code correctly based on the coding rules, um, which we all know are very confusing. So <laughs> I've spent years training therapists about those. Um, and I myself didn't understand it until I was probably practicing for three to five years. Like it didn't fully settle into my brain. Um, and I came out of school completely misunderstanding that you could even use the AMA rule. I didn't even know it existed for a long time. So so it's very common for therapists to completely misunderstand this. And our platform gives visibility into that so that you actually can see which therapists don't understand the rules. So. Yes. Uh, from experience, I the misunderstanding rate is very high in our industry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, for sure. So you had mentioned this earlier, over-documentation as one of the uh, key mistakes that you're picking up. Um, and I think when we talked in Chicago, it was the most frequent or common harmful mistake. Can you talk about exactly what that is and um, how you help practices and therapists remedy that? Yeah, no, great question. So the way we're measuring over documentation is we're comparing um, every note that we analyze, we're comparing it to that subset of documentation that we have had human validated and deemed to be both concise and compliant. 
So we're looking for the amount of content within each section of the note. And so what you can see within our platform is you can actually see per clinic and per therapist broken down by the section of the note. So we have it by subjective, objective, and then assessment and plan is kind of grouped together. So we have three, three separate sections. And you can see the percent that it's either under or over documented. And under documentation is directly related to compliance and missing compliance information. But that over documentation is related to just too much content in the note based off of a comparison to what we've deemed to be perfect kind of written note. And so from like the clients of ours who have over documentation, what we do is, and what's nice is from the feedback that we have that we help our clients give to therapists. So one of the things and one of the goals of our company is not to just give informational things to our clients, but also give actionable items for for our clients to work with their therapists on so they know exactly where to help their therapists. That was one of the frustrating things for me when I was practicing was everybody gave me vague kind of feedback about compliance or documentation. It was all very like, everyone needs to work on your plan of cares. Okay, what does that mean? Like, what what does that mean exactly? Like, okay, everyone, make sure you're documenting your plan, your prior level function, right? So, so with our tool, you can be specific to each individual therapist. We give you exactly which component needs to be done, like needs to be improved from a compliance section, and from an over documentation section. We can give you exactly which section of which note type the therapist is actually over documenting. What's nice is either one of those therapists, we have tools that help them, and it's the same tool. You need to know the minimum requirement for what you need to document, which we have for people. And then we've developed um, templates, so suggested templates for our clients to utilize so that you can, again, the same, it's the same thing you give to either one of those therapists. If your therapist is not poor with compliance, you give them that, you know, here's the components, the minimum requirement, and here's the template. If your therapist is over-documenting, you give them the same thing. Here's the components for the minimum requirement, and here's the template. And so you can really hone in on either one of those kind of therapist type. Um, and then again, to your point earlier, Chad, about objective information. That's one of the big things that our clients really, um, most of the things like, especially like over documenters, we know the therapists we work with that write too much. Um, it's just, it, I mean, we ourselves probably know if we write too much, right? Like it's just, we know that in, internally. Oftentimes we're just not comfortable real, like letting go of what we're writing because we're not sure it's going to be compliant or we feel like we have to have that information in there. So our tool gives our clients an objective way to give that feedback to therapists and then allows you to monitor their compliance so that they don't reduce their over documentation and then lose their compliance. So we've had a lot of really positive feedback on just the objectivity of our platform to allow it's not just an opinion of the clinic director or the practice owner. It's objective data that's showing their therapist this information. Yeah. The one thing that Mike was most excited about was uh, the score, the documentation score. Can you talk about that and about the components that go into that and how that helps uh, therapists improve their documentation? Yeah, for sure. So we have, um, so our compliance score is based on a zero to 100 scoring system. So where 100 is good and zero is bad. So between 80 and 100 is what, what we deem as good or excellent from a compliance perspective. Between 60 and 80 is going to be um, where there is some to significant audit risk. And then below 60 is going to be where there's a likely audit failure. We divide that out into multiple components across the different node types. So today we have initial evaluation, follow-up visit, and progress visit um, that we have each component. So we have five components for initial eval, three components for follow-up visit, and then five components for progress visit. And so in our platform, you can actually see the score for each component. And so you can actually, and then, then additionally, each one of those are weighted a little differently depending on the importance. So for instance, like we have prior level of function and then, you know, functional objective data within an initial evaluation. But the prior level of function is weighted more heavily than the, than the data. And so, or... It might not be exactly, but they are weighted differently. So based on that, we actually give feedback to the therapist in what we call the provider snapshot, um, which gives you feedback. Like if your therapist comes in and they have a, a 70 is their score in their provider snapshot, they would have their top three components that they need to work on that are in order of the most heavily weighted to the least heavily weighted. 
And then from there, they know I need to focus on this one component first. Like I need to focus on description of condition in my initial eval first, because it's the most heavily weighted. And if I improve that, if I can increase my score there, it's going to have a more overall impact, higher overall impact on my score. Um, so we try to give visibility into that. Additionally, as you can imagine, each visit type itself is weighted differently depending on the importance in a Medicare audit and in a private payer audit. So an initial eval is a much more important than like document than just one follow-up visit. Um, so we we have the weightings, you know, based on the component level and then also on the visit level within the episode of care, which all combined gives you an average audit score for each individual provider. And then of course you could break that down within our interface to only look at Medicare visits, to only look at initial evals, to only look at, you know, um, Blue Cross Blue Shield for progress visits. Like you can break it down however you'd like to see it. Yeah. And the other thing I, and I'm not sure you had mentioned this earlier, but it, it's all data, right? So yes. it's, all inclusive of every EMR note, essentially anything that's entered into the system is analyzed in one way or another or can be analyzed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there, um, so we're pulling every signed document. So I will caveat with that. It has to be a signed document for us to pull it. So if you have those therapists that are like lingering with their note signatures, um, which obviously I've, I've been that, that therapist myself, um, then we may, you know, that note isn't pulled until it's signed. Um, and additionally, you'll notice I'm missing um, re-evaluation and discharge discharge visit types. Um, we will be adding analysis of those two visit types um, in the upcoming few months. So we'll have um, an expanded compliance section of our platform coming soon. Um, the reason we didn't have that initially is because our first subset of data that we were working with had such few visits um, of discharge visits and re-evaluation visits, which we know are not as common. Um, so we we didn't include them in because we didn't have enough for validation, but now we do. And so we'll be adding those in over the summer. Very cool. The one thing that uh, I was intrigued by and ended up walking away with as a question after we had met in Chicago was, you know, is everything that you're providing with regards to the score and recommendations, is it aligned with what the insurance company with one of the stakeholders with what they're looking for. I understand that you're providing a ton of information to PTs, owners, and directors. You integrate essentially with all the major EMRs in the industry. Yeah, most of them. So right now it's prompt, um, web PT clinicians, and then we're working with some of the others to, to, to get integrations as well. So, but the main ones. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So can you talk about, um, that component of exactly what the insurance companies are looking for or, providing that. And I know you have one specific case of a practice and uh, working through a, one of the blues um, yeah. going through an audit there. Can you talk about that? Because I think there's some valuable insights for most practice owners in that story. Yeah. So I'll talk about, I'll do like kind of high level first about what a lot of our clients are doing. And then I'll talk specifically about that, um, that specific client of ours. So um, so right now, a lot of our clients use our platform as a compliance, um, like assurance tool, quality assurance tool. So, you know, like if they get audited, you know, and they say that Medicare comes in and says like, Hey, you know, we want to see what you're doing from a compliance perspective. They can say, you know, we have this continually monitoring tool that's monitoring, you know, compliance on a continuing basis. And we have this level of feedback that we give to our therapist and here you can see how they're improving. So that's number one, you know, it's just a great quality assurance program. So in fact, it's, we can't, we can't do it with a human. Like we just can't do that from a human perspective because we don't have the manpower for that. Um, so that number one is what, what a lot of our clients use this for. Um, one specific client is going through um, an audit right now um, with a third party with a Blue Cross Blue Shield. And so they got audited on a large subset of notes um, for about 50 of their, of their therapists. And so what we've done is we've done actually head to head. Um, so we we take a look at our score and the score from the audit and we see how it matches, which it matches within a few points, which is really cool. Um, but additionally, what they can do is they can actually see within our platform those therapists that have been audited and then are going to get re-audited in six months. They can actually monitor if they're making changes to their documentation. And so this particular client is on prompt. So we have those updates 
um, data updates twice a month for them. So they can see, you know, every two weeks or so, is this therapist actually making the progression with their documentation that I expect? Um, additionally, we work with them on their templates. Um, every company is a little bit, you know, they have they they have specific kind of history of how they've used templates. You know, everyone has their own way that they want to do that. We have suggestions, but we also work with clients to say like, hey, you know, add this or put this in there. And then we ensure that those are going to get good scores within the system so that they can get that out to the therapist to ensure good scores. So, so it's been a really fun project and that probably shows my geekiness, but it's been a really fun project for us to go through this um, with our client to see how we can actually monitor that they're, these therapists are making progress with their compliance. Yeah, that's great. And it, only from experience, I know how hard that can be, especially manually, but to, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, to have that constant feedback and be able to show objective progress. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, so AI, like you said, huge buzzword, especially in the marketplace right now. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that with open AI. And I, I just watched an interview with Elon Musk and he said, basically, uh, open AI wouldn't exist if it weren't for me. And then he went on to explain uh, what exactly he meant by that. But uh, yeah, so pretty cool stuff. Keeping an eye on that. I know you have some use cases here. So from what I understand, you know, the smaller practice and if I think back to, you know, when it was just me and maybe a PTA and two front office people, there was no way that I could afford a full-time compliance person. So I know there's a use case there. You're also very effective. And my friends that have larger practices that are working with you as well. Um, yeah. Can you, so can you talk about the ideal client that you're, or the range of clients that you're working with? Mm -hmm. And uh, then I have a question for you about the future of AI and your software. Yeah. Yeah. What do yeah. You know? So I always tell people when they ask, like, who's our ideal client? Um, I don't answer that by size because we really do. We can serve so many different, I mean, from, you know, like you're saying, a one PT practice to, you know, enterprise level clients. So we really do have the capability of doing all of those. Our ideal client is somebody who cares about compliance and cares about collecting um, objective data. And so, and then being able to have actionable, um, actionable items to actually implement within their within their organization. Um, so that is what I would say is our ideal client. And so for, and then of course we we typically a lot of our clients are very forward thinking um, because we're so new in the in the industry. Um, and so because of that, you know, people get excited because they want to try some new technologies and stuff. But um, but I would say our ideal client is somebody who's who's ensuring that their company is running smoothly, um, is cares about compliance and cares about objective data. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, so we'll play crystal ball here, Kelly. It, it, within the next, uh, and I, I know frequently we overestimate how fast things go, but we underestimate, you know, long term where things will be in 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, within the next 12, 24 months, where do you see what changes do you see taking place with the use of uh, with the use of AI within PT specifically? Yeah. So I think that um so for us particularly, we we are really focused on um, leveraging the AI technology that's out there to enhance our tool. Um, and so we actually have been working on um, another kind of new feature where we're using chat GPT within our interface, um, where we've actually built a scaffolding around it to be HIPAA compliant and also trained on our support documents. So you can use it within our interface to ask it PT specific information. Um, you can ask it specific information about our compliance scoring system. Um, as and so again, net so that's today, current, current today. So as you can imagine, so future, we want to implement, so we want to overlay our compliance model so that you can input anything in there that says, um, you know, you can you can copy your assess assessment section and say, is this compliant? And it would tell you, like, yes, this is compliant, or no, you're missing this and this. Here's a suggestion of how to make that better. Now, that's, again, that's shorter term. Longer term crystal ball vision is for us to actually have built-in feedback similar to that, built into the EMR, so it's real time with the therapists. So that's where ideally what we want to see is that this is not just retro retrospective analysis, but this is giving therapists real-time feedback 
Um, in fact, we had a great call today with some of with our advisory board um, and some of our clients talking specifically about how best to give that to therapists. Um, there's a couple different ways that we foresee that happening, but ultimately, we want this to be faster documentation for therapists to get that feedback real time. We all know that behavior, you know, behavior change happens when you get more real time feedback. Um, and so we'd like to be able to provide that. So that's what we're working toward over the next year or so. Um, and so there's, we have a lot of different ways of how we envision that looking, but ultimately that's our, that's our, my crystal ball vision and our, our crystal ball vision for our company over the next year. So. Very cool. And, and exciting for an owner that, uh, is interested, they're forward thinking, what's the best way for them to get a uh, demonstration or get in contact with you and take the next step in learning more about what, what you can do for them? Yeah. So you can contact me at my email, which is kelly.brown at predictionhealth.com. So that's K-E-L-L-Y dot brown is the color, um, brown like color at, at predictionhealth.com. Um, so you can email me with any sort of interest um, and then we'll get you set up with our sales department um, for a demo. So so we have a great live environment that you can see exactly what it looks like. Um, and then we can go from there. So I'm on the client success team. So I work with our clients moving through the data um, and I help our clients understand how to best utilize the information um, to implement changes in their organization. Um, and so it's been a lot of fun working with our clients to, to see them be successful with our platform. Very cool. Thanks for that, Kelly. Uh, one final question for you. Um, and by the way, we'll put your email address within the show notes so everybody can find that easily if you're listening to this on your way to work. Um, the So uh, final question, books. What th- Growing up, what was the book that you read in your life that was most influential and pivotal um, in your career? Oh my gosh, career, your, Chad, I wasn't your, prepared for this one. I'm aware. <laughs> oh man. You know, I'm, I'm such an avid reader. I, I just got this question the other day about like what sort of books I read and I read, um, I read everything and all things, but I would say as a kid, I think one of the things that, um, I read a lot, I read a lot of fantasy when I was a kid. So Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, all those things. Um, but I think for me, those, those types of books have always been very influential to me. Um, because they always make me so curious about possibilities. Um, and so that's always been something that I've enjoyed, you know, as I've gotten older, I read more of those, you know, business books and self-help books and all, all of those great books too. And the, you know, anything on, um, social emotional intelligence. Um, I'm really into the Enneagram personality test. So I have all those too, but, but I would say when I was a kid that if you're, if you're specifically asking about when I was a kid, I'm, I was, a I was a, a fantasy novel reader, still am today, but that was that was definitely something that I I enjoyed and made my brain broaden out into different curiosities of the world. So okay, so you mentioned Harry Potter. What's that? Nine books? Oh, uh, seven, seven, mm-hmm. seven books, and then Lord of the Rings is three. Oh, just three. I, oh, but it, isn't there, aren't there? There's, there's the Hobbit spin-off. and there's the Silmarillion. Yeah. So the yeah. Hob- it's not technically part of the trilogy, but there's the Hobbit, which is a prequel. And then the Silmarillion is just before that. So, yeah. So in the 12 or so books that you just mentioned, is there a favorite? Oh, God. Um, I mean, I think if, if you said no, that's fine. I know. I think that. You, uh, so I have to pick probably the return of the king which is the end of the lord of the rings because so so in my brain i have to go like which trilogy which 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 series is the best and it's like you got to go lord of the rings and then you have to go the conclusion of it because the just the whole conclusion of that is is just a beautiful um it's just a beautiful conclusion so i would say that book that one book so if you made me pick one <laughs> wonderful i did thank you uh thanks for answering that question uh and thank you so much for taking the time to do this kelly this is great Yes. No, thanks, Chad. This has been such a joy. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. If you're watching this video right now, I'm going to guess that you're a practice owner who's battling against declining reimbursements, upward pressure on cost, increased cost of operating your practice day to day, and also shrinking profit margins. So to answer that here at Breakthrough, we just launched a new program called Profit Under Pressure. And in Profit Under Pressure, you're going to get three primary things. The first is a 13-week masterclass where we're talking through the advanced latest principles on marketing your practice so you can fill space that is the space of your clinics you can fill your therapist schedules 
um, with direct to consumer marketing. Um, you're also going to get any time that we solve one problem in our practice, we usually create another problem. So the one thing that we're hearing a lot of is, you know, how do I calculate my finances? So we have specific training in the 13 week masterclass around how to help you uh, plan and project to be financially project to be more profitable. And then as a bonus, when you apply and get into the course, the other problem that we often create is now we need to hire therapists. So n I've never seen a market like this where it's been so difficult to source and ultimately hire therapists and also retain them. So we're gonna have a specific training as a bonus for you around that. Plus you're gonna get the breakthrough software, which is the same exact software that I use in my practice to get uh, direct to consumer marketing patients, uh, primarily from our patient list and also from cold traffic marketing. So if you're looking to grow your practice, you're looking to increase your profit margins, to have a more sustainable, more viable practice, uh, this is the course for you. Just a few years ago, you know, there was lots of trends here that are working against us. The, the, the current's not moving in the right way. So a few years ago, the industry average was 14.6% uh, in private practice PT in terms of margins and profitability. Today, that number is significantly less. And it looks like with another Medicare cut on the horizon that many of us are gonna be facing even more pressure. This course is how to help you navigate that. So how do you add a cash pay service? How do you negotiate with uh, insurance payers? How can you drop a low payer? That's all gonna be covered in the course, that 13 week masterclass. And also don't forget you get the bonus on incentivizing, uh, retaining PTs, uh, how to source, how to hire, and um, how to do that as well. So it's gonna help you grow your team, be more profitable. Here's the deal, you have to apply to get in. We wanna make sure that you're a practice owner. We don't work with uh, hops practices, pops practices, uh, that type of PT. We only work with private practices, so you do have to apply. I know as of this recording, I believe this class is currently already fully occupied. Um, so when you apply, we'll make sure that you get into the next possible class if you are a fit and if this program is right for you. Just scroll down below, you can fill out the application in less than five minutes and somebody from our team will schedule a call with you, walk through, make sure that you're a good fit for the program and this is the right solution for you. Remember to visit getbreakthrough.com to access our free resource library designed specifically for private practice growth. While you're there, make sure you register for a complimentary growth assessment to learn about potential opportunities for growth in your local market. Again, Thank you for tuning into the Grow Your Practice podcast and supporting our mission to help people in pain get back to normal naturally.